You enter life from your mum in the freezing arctic waters, surrounded by chunks of floating ice. First mission is immediate. Swim straight up through the icy water and take your first breath. Oh, and you better be quick about it. The surface is about 20 feet away, and you've got lungs screaming for air the moment you're born. Your mom stays close, gently nudging you upward. The first gulp of arctic air burns your lungs, but you did it. Back underwater, your stomach is already demanding attention. You nudge closer to mom, finding her milk that's thick as cream. Perfect for helping you pack on the blubber, since you'll need it in these frozen waters. But even mealtime isn't simple here. Every few minutes, you have to pause your feast and follow mom to find another breathing hole. When the ice is too thick, she uses her long spiral tusk like a spear, breaking through the frozen ceiling to create a breathing space for both of you. Your eyes are still adjusting to this weird world of light and shadow. That dark shape in the distance? Is it just an- Oh, you spot it. A massive dark shape gliding through the water. Your tiny heart nearly stops at the sight. An orca, three times bigger than your mom and basically the ocean's apex predator. Even at just a few days old, you know that dark shape means death. Mom positions herself between you and the killer whale, her tusk pointed forward like a spear. It's brave, but also hopeless. An orca could easily tear a narwhal apart if it wanted to. But today, luck is on your side. The killer whale, probably having already eaten and not wanting to deal with an angry mom's tusk, slowly turns and disappears into the murky blue. You've just had your first close call, and learned an important lesson. What to do when you see an orca? Attack! Just kidding. You idiot, stay behind your mom and pray it's not hungry. Just then, more narwhals appear from every direction. It's your pod returning from their hunting trip. Turns out, you're not just surviving with mom, you're part of a bigger family. The water fills with clicks, whistles, and calls as they check if everybody's okay, your pod's own secret language. The next 20 months are all about sticking close to your mom, drinking milk rich enough to make you balloon with blubber, and learning the survival rules of this frozen world. Your days of being a milk-guzzling baby are over. 20 months of mum's premium arctic cream have turned you into a proper blubbery youngster, ready to start actual narwhal life. But here's the thing about narwhals, you aren't born with that legendary tusk. If you're female, you probably won't ever get one. Only a lucky few do. But being male, at least you have something to look forward to in the future. Right now though, you've got bigger problems than wondering when your face sword will show up. First up, learning to dive deep. And not just deep. We're talking about plunging thousands of feet into pitch black water. Why? Because that's where dinner lives. Your pod is teaching you the art of deep diving. But your first attempts are pretty embarrassing. While the adults disappear into the abyss for 25 minutes at a time, hunting for halibut and cod in the depths, you're barely managing 5 minutes before rushing back up for air. Speaking of air, remember how mom used to break breathing holes for you with her tusk? Well, now you're on your own tuskless and trying to figure out where the next air hole might be. You have to learn to find those rare gaps in the ice sheet, or it's game over. But nature didn't leave you completely helpless. You're developing something special, the ability to see in absolute darkness. One day, as you're swimming through the black water, you sense something moving nearby. Not with your eyes, you can barely see your own fins, but somehow you just know it's there. A tasty squid, floating just out of reach. Your first attempts at catching it are about as graceful as a drunk penguin, but eventually, you figure out how to use the sixth sense to track your prey, and after a few attempts, you finally catch it. Hmm, tasty. You're getting better at this hunting in darkness thing. After about a year of practice, something starts happening. A tiny bump appears on your upper lip, smooth and shiny. The older narwhals swimming past you give you knowing looks. Your tusk is finally starting to grow. And even though it's barely longer than your flipper right now, you're already practicing your best unicorn pose. One day, while hunting in the depths alone, feeling pretty confident with your baby tusk, you spot a Greenland shark. It's young like you, about your size, probably also on its first solo hunting trips. Your heart races, but something else kicks in too. A desperate need to prove yourself. The shark circles closer, sizing you up. You point your small tusk forward, trying to look intimidating. Though, you probably look more like a kid wielding a plastic sword. The shark lunges, you dodge and swing your tusk, managing to scratch its side. It comes back for another pass, this time grazing your fin. The water fills with both your blood as you spin and dance in this dangerous underwater ballet. Just when you're both exhausted, a deep, powerful clicking sound echoes through the water. An adult narwhal, one of your mom's friends, emerges from the darkness. The shark decides that this party's getting too crowded and disappears into the deep. Look how I fought it off! 
you brag, trying to hide how much your fins are shaking. Your mom's friends gives you a gentle nudge, the narwhal equivalent of a pat on the back. But her message is clear. Nice spear, kid, but maybe wait until that tusk is full grown before picking fights. The next five years pass in a blur of hunting, growing, and learning. Your once tiny tusk now stretches an impressive eight feet forward, and your body has bulked up to match. These days, you're cruising the Arctic waters with your own pod. 15 to 20 other narwhals, including some males sporting tusks just as impressive as yours. Together, you've carved out your own territory in these icy waters. Most predators don't dare to come near a group of narwhals with spears on their faces. Speaking of predators, there's one that still gives you nightmares, orcas. Just last month, one of your pod members went up for a quick breath of air. That's when it happened. An orca appeared out of nowhere, and before anyone could even react, crack! Your friend's mighty tusk broke like a twig. Your pod noticed his broken tusk sinking to the seafloor and rushed to help. But by the time you got to the surface, all you found was dark red water. The orca was gone, and so was your friend. Just another snack for the ocean's apex predator. That day changed everything. Now your pod stays tight, moving like one body through the water. A few months in and spring arrives. The water temperature starts creeping up from its usual freezing state to a balmy, basically a tropical vacation for narwhals. Different currents, and suddenly everyone's getting restless. It's time for the annual journey to the breeding grounds, where male and female pods gather for their first brief mating season. Now, these aren't just any random spots in the ocean. Narwhals have been meeting here for thousands of years, specific areas in Baffin Bay, where the ice starts breaking up first in the spring. Think of it as the ocean's biggest speed dating event. Hundreds of narwhals who've been living in separate boys' and girls' pods all year suddenly meeting up in one place. A bunch of nervous unicorns with 9-foot-long ice picks trying to flirt to find their perfect match. Your pod starts the journey, and you can already feel the excitement building. You see other male pods are heading the same way, everyone practicing their tusk moves like teenagers getting ready for prom. You catch yourself spinning your tusk around more than usual, hoping you've got what it takes to impress the ladies. After all, you've spent two years growing this nine-foot beauty, time to see if it was worth all the trouble. As you get closer to the breeding grounds, the water fills with more narwhals than you've ever seen. Females start appearing in the distance, and suddenly every male around you is trying way too hard to look cool you included. Your smooth spin moves turns into an awkward twirl, and you almost poke another male in the side. Great first impression. Suddenly, you spot her. A female narwhal gliding through the water with the grace of an underwater ballet dancer. In your rush to show off your magnificent tusk, you manage to tangle it with another male's who had the same idea. The whole breeding ground looks like an underwater talent show gone wrong. Males diving deep, showing off their tusks, trying to look impressive. You attempt your own special move, a perfect spiral swim you've been practicing for months. It's going great until... Oh wait, is she even watching? Nope, she's too busy admiring some hot shot with a slightly longer tusk. Just when you're about to give up and label yourself as the most awkward narwhal in the Arctic, something unexpected happens. Another female notices your failed attempts at being cool and actually seems amused. Turns out, some ladies prefer a guy who can make them laugh, even if it's by accident. Your spring romance lasts just a few days. You hang out, show off your moves, mate, and that's it. Back to living separate lives. That's just how narwhals roll. No family picnics or daddy-daughter days here. Here's a fun fact about narwhal family life. It basically doesn't exist. Males and females only meet during spring breeding season, spend a few days together, then go their separate ways. The females raise any babies on their own in their all-girl pods. You just go back to hanging out with their bachelor pods, probably bragging about their breeding season adventures. This is how life goes on in Narwhal's world. Nowadays, the Arctic is changing. The ice patterns aren't what they used to be, and the waters feel different each year. But Narwhals have survived here for millions of years. And as long as there's deep water, fish to hunt, and ice to break through, you'll keep living your best unicorn whale life. After all, being one of the ocean's biggest mysteries has its perks humans still can't figure you out. And honestly, that's just how you like it.